What is up, my exchange family from all over the world, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Mass Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. How y'all doing, ladies? Hey. Hi. Good to see you. It's going to be a good week. Yep. This, <laughs> yeah. This is one of my favorite weeks of the year. Oh, man. I see you, I see you repping with, with the shirts. What? I must have get the memo. What happened? What? Y'all left me out the email. Oh, or? chief. Yeah. Look at that. Army, Navy in yes. exchange. <laughs> so, man, it, we got one of the biggest rivalries in all of American history, all of American sports this weekend. Um, and I didn't realize how huge it was until I deployed to Iraq in 2008. And so uh, there was definitely a clear boundary established in a, in a, in a whole war zone uh, when, when, this game, when this game was about to uh, be played. Uh, I even went to the Chow Hall. So Chow Hall, they had an Army section and Navy section on the day of the game. So uh, <laughs> that's when I realized, being an Air Force member, that, man, this is really a big, big situation. So there was zero cross-pollination at all of any sort on that day uh, of, of services. So um, today we got reps from each side uh, with us today. And so, Julie, if you don't mind, please introduce today's guest. Thank you so much, Chief. It is a big week for college football. America's game, the Army-Navy game presented by USAA is this Saturday. The Exchange is a participating partner in the game, and you can watch live at 3 p.m. Eastern on CBS. We are honored to have our guests with us today. You likely know their voices more than their faces, but they're here today to talk about America's most storied football rivalry. Please give a big Chief Chat welcome to the voice of Army West Point Sports, Rich DeMarco, and his counterpart at the Navy Sports Network, Pete Matt. Hey. Pete and Rich, thanks so much for joining us. We are super excited to have you on. And just a real quick housekeeping, everybody watching, drop a note in the comments. Let us know where you're tuning in from and who you're rooting for this weekend. Um, share some love with Rich and Pete in the comments. We'll be reading your comments live. Now is a great time to start your watch party to enjoy this live interview with your friends and get a little camaraderie going, right? So if you're not following us, you should. Why not? Chief Chat is every week and we have great guests lined up into 2021. Man, Rich and Pete, Army and Navy. Uh, we, we're, super, <laughs> we're super excited to have y'all with us today. Can you let our viewers know where you're joining us from and how y'all been faring during the pandemic? So I'm here at West Point. I'm in the, uh, I'm in the press box, actually. I'm overlooking the field and they're doing a great job painting it with Navy and Army in each end zone. Maybe we'll take a look a little bit later in Chief Chat, but I'm here at uh, West Point here today and and fair and you know well as well as could be expected during the pandemic and and obviously all our lives have changed since March and, and I'm sure Pete could speak to the same thing but you know the fact there's been some normalcy some normalcy a new normal for the college football season and for Army being able to play now a, a 10th game this year has has been really good just to get back to some kind of, you know, regular thing that, you know, we enjoy that we do as part of our jobs. Yeah, I mean, I'll echo what Rich said, uh, coming to you from Churchton, Maryland, which is about 20 minutes south of the campus uh, of the United States Naval Academy. And, you know, just for our seniors, especially and the seniors at Army, uh, seniors at Air Force, uh, you know, especially for Army and Navy, uh, there, there is no, you know, everybody else in college football is getting that gear back. Well, the, the folks at Navy and Army are doing that. And uh, for them to be able to have as many games as they had in the fall, more importantly, to be able to play this game uh, still in its national spotlight, you feel great uh, for the student athletes uh, coming up on Saturday that they get a chance to, to play this game uh, at least one more time uh, in their careers. Yes, sir. And Pete, it's been a crazy year for college football. So many cancellations and postponements. So what is it like for you, you know, in your job, trying to prepare each week when you don't even know if the game is going to happen? Well, as, as Navy found out, we virtually uh, saw the entire month of November get wiped out. We played on Halloween, and then our games on the 7th, 14th, and 21st were all postponed uh, for various uh, elements of COVID. Uh, we were finally able to make up the Memphis game of 28. Tremendous football game. Great rivalry for us in the American Conference. Uh, the top two teams since we've joined in terms of conference wins are Memphis and Navy. Uh, played a 10-7 game. And then last week, uh, Tulsa, who's headed to the American Athletic Conference Championship game. We had that game made up on December the 5th. And these are normally weekends that Army and Navy don't play. So they have plenty of preparation time uh, leading into this game. 
but uh, you're right. I mean, one week you're you're knee deep in Memphis notes, and then they postpone that game, and then you're knee deep in Tulsa notes, and that game goes awry. You start peeking ahead to South Florida. Nope. Um, so as tough as as it is for us from a broadcasting standpoint to you know call an audible. Imagine what the coaches and players are going through. Exactly. You know, one week you're looking at one tape, then you start on the other, then another. Uh, you know, finally these two teams have arrived where. December 12th is the game on the schedule as it's supposed to be played. Uh, so you're ramping up to this week anyway. You've just kind of done it in a lot different way. It's funny. And, and just to work off what Pete said, it's been interesting for Army because Mike Buddy, Bob Beretta, they did a great job putting the schedule together with Jeff Monk. And because Army is an independent, not in a conference, they schedule their own games. So having to, in August, put a complete schedule together, nothing short of miraculous. So we're going along on the schedule and we were supposed to play army was supposed to play BYU week three. So we find out, I think it was Tuesday of that week that BYU wasn't going to be able to play. There was, there were some COVID, you know, issues at BYU. So then it turns into, Oh, but we might have a game Saturday. It might be home. It might be away. You know, our athletic director, Mike buddy um, <laughs> goes on social media to say, Hey, looking, you know, looking for a date for Saturday, someone who wants to play. So in your mind, you're thinking, Oh my God, if it's this team, is it's that team, what am I going to be able to do um, to prepare to be able to obviously, you know, you know, portray this game to the fans. And then thankfully, I think for logistically, there was no game that week, but then the air force week, we find out on Thursday, I'm, I'm seeing a, a spirit luncheon that we have um, on post on Thursdays of home game weeks during normal years. This year for COVID, it was Air Force and, and Navy will do one. But um, it's just interesting because, um, you know, I find out right after that luncheon on Thursday, the Air Force game is off. So then it's like, okay. And then every week we've been off since then, it's like, oh, well, could the Air Force game be rescheduled? We thought maybe it was Thanksgiving weekend potentially, and it wasn't. So it's just been try to fly by the seat of our pants a little bit when you, when you get these cancellations. Wow. And Rich, speaking of chaotic nature of this football season for the first time since world war two, the game this year, army Navy will be held at West point. So how will that make the game even more special? I'll tell you, I'm thankful every day I come in here to work. And I really mean that. And you have people that are, you know, spend their whole lives wanting to come to West Point just to take a tour of the place, right? I mean, that that humbles you. And being able to call the games here at Mikey Stadium, a place I used to come to as a kid, to games. And then to realize that it's going to be at Mikey Stadium for, again, for reasons no one wants to, you know, it's it's not, it's not because it's at Mikey for a historical anniversary. Look, it's because of the pandemic. But the reality is, it's going to be here for the first time in 77 years. So this is my 17th year at West Point. It's not, it's not lost on me that, you know, um, provided there's not another, you know, um, once in a hundred years pandemic or situation, this is a once in a lifetime situation for me being able to be here. So uh, coming out this week and, and I wanted to do the, the, the broadcast with you guys, the interview from up here, because I'm going to turn the computer around. You could see how they're actually, uh, you know, lettering the field for Army, yeah. Navy, and it's pretty, it's pretty special. Look, you, know, you can get a oh. look at air. Look at that. Oh, my gosh. Strategically placed pads that say beat Navy in that corner, I want to say, and our Sorry, Pete. creative crew <laughs> figures that out. They're, they're working on the midfield logo, as you could see, and then see that you know, exchange logo there. Oh, yeah, how about that? The exchange, <laughs> there's that nice American flag near midfield, and then Army in the end zone to our right. So, I, like I said, seeing being at Mikey Stadium so often over the past 17 years, and even as a kid, but then uh, seeing this place lettered like this and set up for an Army Navy game, even even more special for Saturday. Yeah, Pete. Hi. How, how do y'all feel? How do y'all really feel? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I think the, the ironic thing is, is we, we make a, you know, big hubbub about it, you know, leading up to the game and it is different. Uh, I'll point out 1943 Navy was able to win that game. So uh, the Mids are hoping that they can find. Hopefully they can find a, a similar result uh, this week, but you know what though? And, and I, I said this on an interview uh, with some folks in San Diego earlier this week, you know, as Rich showed you on the field, um, the folks at West Point have gone out of their way to, to paint the Navy in the end zone, to treat the game with the class that it ultimately uh, brings to the field each and every uh, year. And I think when you look around, you look at all of the, uh, you mentioned the, look, we looked at the exchange sign and 
uh, all the great work folks, uh, you know, at USAA, Chevrolet, all the other great sponsors. Without that corporate support, this game isn't on national TV in a standalone slot like it normally is uh, each and every season. It just so happens that because of the pandemic, we had to move the site this year to West Point because they were the designated home team this year. But at the same time, the folks at West Point have uh, treated this game with the same amount of class that you would uh, on a neutral field and tried to keep it as at least you know, as much a neutral environment as, as it possibly can be uh, being played up there. And that doesn't surprise me as, uh, you know, Rich mentioned, I mean, Mike Buddy, the athletic director, Bob Beretta, uh, those are, those are first class people in, in college sports administration. They're, they're some of the very best uh, at what they do. And you knew that they would treat this game uh, with the same amount of class. But as like we always say, once the game is kicked off to the players uh, you know, it, it really won't matter you know, what stadium they're playing in. We could be playing this game anywhere uh, in the world. Uh, and, and these two sides would give you amazing effort, amazing mm -hmm. football, because as I, as I tell everybody that will listen, these service academies, you know, not only do they enjoy playing each other and it's a great rivalry, but they win a lot of football games. They play a lot of winning mm -hmm. football. Mm -hmm. And, and that's what, uh, that's what I, I look forward to the most is when these two programs get together and show people just how good they are at, at football as well as all the pageantry that goes around the game. That's awesome, awesome. Mm. So, so Pete, um, there won't be any fans uh, this year beyond the Corps of Cadets and the Brigade of Midshipmen. Uh, how would that change the atmosphere of the game? You know, I think for, and you know, watching Army games on TV and, and being at our games when the Brigade has been allowed to come to a couple of them, uh, God bless them. You know, just over 4,000 strong on each side but they have made it sound like there's 35,000 people there. Um, <laughs> they have been amazing. Their support, uh, the play, not lost on the players and the coaches. One of the first things they said, the first game they were allowed to come to uh, at Navy earlier this year, um, you know, our coaches and players talked about how big of a difference. Now, granted, uh, is it different than having 75,000 like you would in Philadelphia? Of course. But at the same time, you're going to have tremendous support from uh, the Corps and the Brigade. Uh, as is always the case uh, at this football game. Uh, they will cheer uh, their brothers on the football field on and, and try to give them as much of an atmosphere uh, as you can possibly get uh, on a cold day in December. Though for West Point, the weather forecast for December looks pretty appetizing uh, for this time of year. I mean, I've been, there, I've been there during basketball season where it hasn't been oh. quite as warm as it's going to be this long week. Long walk but... to the arena, Pete. Yeah, long walk from the parking lot. The <laughs> you know, look, I mean, 50, 50 degrees in December at West Point, man, that, that's tropical. So uh, I think for the players, I think for the players, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be great. Once the game kicks off, it's just a it's just a 100 and you know 20 yard piece of turf that they're running up and down on, uh, trying to do the best they can. And, and I've also noticed very you know when you watch these games on TV and Pete mentioning watching Army games and watching games across the country, you fans fill in pretty nicely when they spread out. So when we have 4,000 or so cadets at a game, I mean it doesn't look like there's 4,000 people. It looks like there's significantly more the way they're spread out. So when you look at all the sections and there's a section at midfield taken up with that American flag banner to kind of separate the brigade and the midshipmen. If 4,000 midshipmen, 4,000 cadets fill in, I think it's actually going to look really good. And it really, it's one deck. There's only a second deck on one side of the field at Mikey stadium. So I think it's going to look pretty filled up and look, whenever you have army Navy with whether it's the way the field is, is, is colored in the, the banners, the cadets, it's always a great spectacle. I think here right next to, you know, Lusk Reservoir, just the stone's throw from the Hudson River. I think it's going to create a, a once in a lifetime memorable look on Saturday. Yeah, I'm sure it's going to be electric in there, if, you know, yes. from start to finish. Cannot wait to, can't wait to see that. And it's going to be beautiful on television as well. So the, the service academies, obviously they play each other every year, but what makes this game so much bigger and the rivalry so much greater than all of the other games? Um, Pete, you want to go first and then can hear from Rich? I mean, look, I mean, this is, you go, you look at how long these two institutions have played each other, how many games they've played. And when this rivalry was really first established, these were two of, you know, the major football programs in the country. I mean, 
uh, you know, Navy had a, a national championship, uh, you know, in the twenties, army had a ridiculous run of football, uh, in the forties with a couple of the greatest college football players of all time. Then Navy did the same with Roger Stallback and Joe Bellino, uh, in the sixties. So when you look at all of the history that this game has had, uh, I, I think that is one of the reasons why, uh, this game has continued to, it was one time really the biggest game on. Uh, the American college football landscape. And once the commercialization of college football really picked up and uh, we got to see more of the regional rivalries that we really didn't get to see in a lot of places in the country, the Alabama Auburns, the USC, UCLA, uh, those types of games, you know, now that TV shows us everybody's rivalry, the great thing is army and Navy have also stepped up in the commercialization, if you will, of college football because of the the great corporate support of people like USAA and the exchange and Chevrolet and all the other sponsors that make this possible. So it has out, it has outlasted all of these rivalries, A, in the test of time, but also have matched the corporate support that you really need to have in college football right now to stay relevant. And uh, I'm not sure many schools would be able to attract the kind of corporate support uh, that this game uh, has, has brought because of all the people that it represents, not only on the field, but all the people around the world and all the alumni of Army and Navy and those who have served to uh, root these two uh, teams on coming up uh, on the weekend. I think also, you know, from what Pete said, you talk about the, the commercialization and, and the corporate partners. I mean, this is a this is a first class brand Army and Navy, and I don't think anyone can can argue that. Right. As I often say, you know, we could talk for hours. What let's say we're doing 30 minutes here. We could do probably 300 minutes on things that are wrong with college sports and college football. Right. But this game, Army and Navy, these academies, this is what's right. There always seems like there it's everything's right in the college football world when Army and Navy are good. And I'm sure, you know, when corporate partners there's a lot of really smart people, a lot smarter than me, that have to look at and evaluate what is a good brand to partner with, right? Because when the exchange, when there's a banner that says the exchange at Mikey Stadium, it's going to be all over TV on Saturday. That's a that's a connection. That's your you're partnering with someone. So what it means to have companies say, hey, we want to be a part of Army Navy, just shows you that that that's proof of the brand. You know, USAA the exchange, Chevrolet, they, they want to be part of this. So, so that's one thing. I think the other thing is, you know, when you think back to college football, and Pete mentioned it, you know, perfectly, Navy in the 20s, Army in the 40s, Army in the 50s, Navy in the 60s. I mean, this is, um, you know, college football has gone so many different directions with, you know, professional football and, you know, just the, the commercialization, how it's, it's such a big business. But when Army and Navy is playing winning football, it's hard to not be a fan of this game. And I'll even say with the passion, they're not going to be fans, maybe Joe fan in the stands this year. They'll be the, the brigade, of course, in the core of cadets. But I don't know if there's another rivalry game where when you look at when you look at uh, Alabama, Auburn, when you look at Stanford, Cal, and those I mean, they're, they're regional, but they're also games where like if I went to an Alabama, Auburn game, right, I'd be there just wanting to see a good game. Right. I wouldn't have right. any particular care about who won the game i want to see it come down to the last couple minutes and have a lot of fun whereas with army and navy everyone has a relative um an uncle that they'd see at weddings or a cousin someone they went to, to high school with that enlisted in the army and navy everyone knows someone that was in one of these branches so i don't think anyone could watch this game and just want to see a good game whether it's something like like hey you know what this kid i grew up with he enlisted in the Navy. You know, I, I want to see Navy win. Or, hey, you know what? My, my dad served in the Army. I want to see Army win. Everyone has a rooting interest. And I don't know if there's any game ever played in college football or pro football every year where every single person has an excuse to root for one of the teams. Hey, and, and for me, personally, I'm I'm conflicted because I started my <laughs> I started my career off in the Marine Corps, which is the Department of the Navy. And then I transferred to the Air Force, which used to be part in the army. And so for me, uh, it, uh, but then I worked for the army and air force exchange service. So that, well, I won't say who I'm, I'm cheering for, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about Chief. that off the air. Yeah, we'll yeah, guide yeah. you in the right way. Chief. Exactly. Chief, Chief, here's what we do when army and air force play each other. We say that we are a house United. Oh, is that that's what, what we is? say. Yes. That's, yeah. That's that sounds really cool. Yes. I, don't, I don't think that works in the sports world. <laughs> America wins, Chief. Go for me, yeah. go Air Force. We say it right back to back. 
<laughs> hey, it's because of the exchange, we were able to interview Mark Wahlberg a couple of years ago, right? I mean, right. How, yes. He was a guest at the game uh, two yeah. years yeah. ago in 2018. Yes, yep, absolutely. He was. And two- as, oh, sorry, Julie, go ahead. I was going to say it's two years ago today because it came up in my Facebook memory. It did. It did. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh, All right. My so, photos. I don't get a lot of likes, but that one has like maybe the most likes of any of my Facebook yeah. photos. I'll tell you that much. Okay. Yes. Probably the same for Julie and I. Yeah. yeah. Same. We're, 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 we're slightly like, fans of Mark Wahlberg. Just slightly. No doubt. <laughs> Him and I are Thunder Buddies for life. <laughs> <laughs> So Rich, you, you've mentioned uh, some, some, some of the things that are going on there at the build and you've mentioned now the exchange, we're a participating partner and just wanted to follow up and say that we are honored to do that. We are honored to be a part of this game um, and to be there. You know, our motto is we go where you go. And um, that means that we support warfighters, military members, families um, at, along their journey. And this is, this is part of it. So from the very beginning when they enlist until they leave. Well, and I mean, even after retirement awesome. and i'm sorry what you guys are doing is awesome from you know really evolving to the online you know shop my exchange and and being able to just be there for military families folks on post it's um i don't know i think that's something where and i'm not in the military but i think that's something where it's such a comfort to know that the exchange is there for you when you're on a military base it um it's really special so thank you guys thank you we're, we're definitely honored so let's talk record Rich, Army football has been ranked in the AP polls two of the last three years after 22 unranked years. What has contributed to the recent success of the program there at West Point? Jeff Munkin, and he came in and has a long history with Paul Johnson. They were together at the team that Army is going to be playing this weekend. (laughs) Maybe they were together there for a long time, but I'll tell you, um, he has just brought a winning attitude. He's brought a formula. He knows, bottom line is he knows what it takes to win at a service academy. And He's just brought it. And I think everything from the little details to culture, how to build a program and, and he's gotten support. And we talk about Mike Buddy and, and the athletic department over the last several years has, you know, given him the tools to, you know, build a team like this. And I think that you're finally seeing what army fans were looking for, for those 22 years, as you mentioned, just to be able to, to compete, to compete against the fellow service academies and, uh, and to compete nationally. And I don't want to say it's simple just down to Jeff Munkin, but since he's come on board, how he has molded this program with the support from the academy um, has been like night and day. Yeah. And so, Pete, so I, I want to tell you a quick story before I, I ask the next question. Um, we had Malcolm Perry on the show uh, here probably a few months ago. Uh, and Julie and Leah told me this story about uh, they, they interviewed Malcolm Perry post uh, them, them not winning this game, and he was real short and, and matter of fact, and it was, it was, it, it was, uh, it was more of a one way interview. It was them talking to him, him not responding. <laughs> but then, and then, but then we we interviewed him a few months ago. Of course, you guys won, uh, and, and he was a lot more warm and receptive, and yeah, he he kind of opened us up, opened up to us a little bit. But uh, I was talking to Lee and Julie. I was like, y- y'all can't interview the man right after. Well, after losing that game, that, that's that's a rough one. That's a rough <laughs> situation. Yeah, I mean, look, I, I think when you, you – all you have to do is read the emotions of the faces of the players. They don't have to say a word after the game. You, you know by reading their faces what has happened, who's won, who's lost, the energy spent by each team. So you can understand why um, – you know, from the day you walk on West Point, you know, you're, you're taught to, you know, go Army, beat Navy. When you arrive in Annapolis, it's go Navy, beat Army. And that's, that's the message you've, you know, been getting uh, for the last four years every time you turn around. And you know the emotional uh, effort that is spent by each side. Their faces tell you everything. You don't, you don't need any fancy commentators, nothing. Uh, all you got to do is point a camera at the faces of the two teams. It'll tell you after the game who's won uh, and who's lost. And I think you got those range of emotions with Malcolm. Uh, you know, when you when you lose, you put so much effort into it. You know, it's hard it's hard to come up with the words to to talk about it. And then obviously uh, his 300 yard game a year ago, uh, one of the greatest days in college football history. So uh, it you know the, the emotions and, and how much each player puts in. Um, 
pretty evident uh, at, at the end of each of these games. Yep, and and so like last year you were talking about, well, you kind of hinted on the, a very, very successful uh, last season at 11 and two, and uh, you are finishing with the top 20 ranking, uh, but things haven't went as, as uh, it was the well this year. Uh, and so what, what would a win over Army mean for this season? Well, I mean, it would mean everything. I mean, that's, that's still uh, – at the, you go back to the very beginning of the football season before we even knew who was going to play anybody. Uh, both sides said the one football game is going to get played this year is the Army-Navy game. These, yes. these two teams are going to play no matter what. So uh, that, that pretty much tells you everything right there. So uh, winning this game, uh, you know, based on – you know, we, we play a really tough conference schedule. You know, last year we were successful at navigating it. This year, uh, you know, we've had a couple of balls that didn't bounce our way uh, for whatever reason. So uh, winning this game, whether it's two to nothing, three to two, you know, 14 to 10, uh, doesn't matter. Uh, you're just simply trying to, to scratch and claw one more win for the seniors uh, on this football team uh, so they can go out uh, a winner in their football careers. So Pete and Rich, before we say goodbye, wanted to turn very briefly to our live feed just to kind of let you know who's watching. We do have people from all over the world watching right now. Um, we have Marie who says, Rich, she's talking about when you turned to, to pan to the field. She said, what a great layout for the football field. Go Army and then American flag and then um, red, white, and blue hearts and a football emoji. So she's, she's rooting for the Army this weekend. Um, Sandy says she loves to see the exchange logo out there. Um, we also have Debbie who says she's watching from West Point. I believe Debbie works um, at our exchange at West Point. So she also says, go Army. So getting a lot Hi, of Debbie. Army love here. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> Home field advantage. Yeah, a little bit of a home field advantage. So we'll see how that uh, works out in person at the game this weekend. Over to you, Chief. Awesome, awesome. So um, Rich and Pete, it's been a true honor having you with us today on Chief Chat. Uh, we, we definitely appreciate you guys got the freaking coolest jobs in the world. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, calling calling sports for for your your respective academies and and um, and it's you know this this is a, a rivalry that that is freaking like none other. Uh, in, in my opinion. So uh, thank you so much. Uh, this, you know, this conversation that we had means so much to all of the service members all over the world, uh, but specifically the Army Navy, man, they, they, they're going back and forth right now. So it's a lot of, it's a lot mm -hmm. of text message, uh, what well, group texts and, and, and Facebook groups and all kind of other things, uh, you know, getting hype behind this game. So uh, thank you all for being the voice of, of, both, of both sides. And we look forward to watching an awesome game on Saturday. Thankful and grateful to be on. It means a lot. Appreciate you having us, and certainly our thoughts with all of our service people around the world who'll be watching uh, from locations that uh, they they can't really tell us uh, where they're at. Uh, in some cases, coming up uh, this weekend, it's uh, I, it's a true honor and humble to be a part uh, of this game coming up this weekend. Oh yeah, no, and, and like you said, there's places in the world where people are going to be up three, four, five o'clock in the morning to watch watch this game. So. Uh, uh, thank you for keeping us keeping us uh, in the loop and in tune. Thank you. Thanks Bye so much. Guys. You guys have a great day. Good luck. Uh, go Army, go Navy. Chief chat out. Chief chat out. <laughs> Bye. Bye.